Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd with Bish's RV here with yet another ORV, yeah, you know me for you, the 28 DVS. Um, and once again, what they've done here is they've taken a very popular, very commonplace floor plan and just beefed it up, like serious beefcake action going on here. So um, one of the things that's interesting here is they, they habitually have a different way of going about a cargo bunk system. They, they do it off the side of the RV, in this case, the back corner on the poop side of the camper. And what's interesting about that is it allows for a bigger, wider baggage door. And that can be really handy depending on what you're loading into it. It's very nice for big, wide stuff. Not as handy for big, long stuff, however. Um, sometimes that's important on a floor plan, sometimes not. On this floor plan, I think what they did is actually the better way to go. On some other ones, I don't know that. Um, they're very good about uh, a big, wide awning. This is, remember, their Backcountry series with the TRX package and all kinds of things, basically. Uh, we're even looking at uh, one of the samples of the various solar packages that you can get from uh, ORV today. But like all the ORVs, you've got Goodyear tires, you have um, actual shocks on your leaf spring suspension system, more ride shackles to help dampen the shocks further, greasable zerks on those, by the way, and a custom-built off-road chassis. Northwood, uh, I'm sorry, I do that every time because they're sister companies. Um, Outdoors RV. Uh, builds their own chassis, just like Northwood. Um, the, the physical construction is almost nearly identical. This is eight foot wide. Basically, this is this is this has the body size characteristics of a Northwood Nash, with uh, the feature characteristics of an Arctic Wolf and then somehow still manages to pile on its own aesthetic. They've created their own interesting, different identity here. Um, and ORV feels a little bit more progressive to me of the two sisters there. Now, this is a floor plan that offers some very good qualities, like the traveling access on this one. Um, and it seems interesting, for the longest time, a direct entry bathroom door, so that you don't gotta, you know, hose the kids off before they get in the shower or whatever. That used to be something that people literally would say, the camper I'm buying has to have that. And it has slowly phased out a little bit. I'm kind of glad to see it ain't dead. And if you uh, like how we go through these things, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let's get in here and get you some more details. So I actually want to begin this uh, a little bit differently because I'm enjoying something I'm personally getting to experience in this RV right now. And that is these, these dual big XL Max Air vent fans. So first of all, the one up here in the bedroom comes with its own remote control. So you don't even got to get your naked butt out of bed to get to that thing. Uh, but you can open, close the vent. It's a push-pull fan, by the way. It's not exhaust fan only. Um, so this is actually an upgraded fan, even above me on what we're going to see in the bathroom. So what I've got happening is I've got this thing pulling air in. And the fan's only running at 20% right now. And uh, it's creating like a, uh, a very solid dynamic breeze. Now, pardon the camera work as I spin you around like a record, baby. I'm going to give you a brief overview of of the uh the living room area here and the reason that i'm doing all this not the living room part that's just because we're here is because uh like you know when i go through and i open up all the cabinets and i wrestle with all the sofas and i open everything up sometimes i get really hot i got really warm in here and i kick these two fans on and it dropped the temperature in here about 10 degrees in 10 minutes and i was shocked at how well it was working this is a four speed exhaust fan I got it on two out of four. So it's at its second lowest setting right now. And just, <laughs> this thing's incredible. Now, if you crank them up all the way, they can make some decent noise. But the fact is those things crank breeze. Now I've noticed this company uses what I call the peekaboo, I smell you door. And the real reason a lot of manufacturers will do this is because they can build the two sidewalls however they want to. And then basically they can hang the door wherever they want to. And then most of the time they just dig out the spot where the latch goes after that. So it doesn't matter where they hang the door. The reason that they're doing this on this one could be that. But also, if you close the bathroom door, it is still pulling hot air out of the RV. So when we breathe, when we cook, when we exist, when we, I don't know, pass gas, we create hot air that rises. We all know the physics of that, I think, at this point. Um, well, that will create a thermal blanket up in the roof. And especially with that vaulted barreled roof, it will suck all that hot air kind of into one spot. And that fan can be running to pull that hot air out of the RV. Well, uh, let's say you're just boondock dry camping and it's a nice spring or fall kind of day. And you, you can use the bedroom fan to pull in that cool air. You can sleep comfortably while all the hot air is getting exhausted out of the RV. 
And I am greatly enjoying that right now because yesterday when I walked in here, they did not have the heat on and I was freaking freezing making all those videos for you. Today, they left the heat on since yesterday and it's scorching in here. Naturally, today is the day I wore my heavy clothes, so I'm sweating to the oldies like Richard Simmons over here. And I'm really enjoying those fans. So we've talked for now three minutes about fans. I think you get the idea. Let's start talking about some other things. You have a choice between a hide-a-bed or a theater sofa. Let's rip off the Band-Aid. They are using carpet. They are using the, uh, the meat slicer floor vents on here. That's just what this company does. And I don't suspect they'll be changing any time. I don't suspect they'll be changing away from the brown decor. If you don't like that stuff, this is a very industry standard floor plan that everybody and their brother makes a version of. We can certainly get you a layout like this from another builder, but not built like this. That's the rub, bub, because these guys build thicker, better, heavier, stronger. Like when you hear a lot of RV brands use, they say, we have real wood cabinet doors. They, they, they always like to kind of put the doors in lowercase like, and, and try to hide it. Um, when you can actually see the knots in the wood, that tells you that is real actual wood. Some people don't like that. Some people see the knots as an imperfection. I like it because, I don't know, it's just character is real to me. That's just me, though. Um, they are also extremely good in this company about always making sure you have some, uh, you know, a, a reasonable prep space. Um, a lot of manufacturers, if you look at a floor plane like this, right after the stove top would be the refrigerator. Instead, they're giving us this big double... Uh, cabinet below and countertop and double cabinet above and you're still getting a pantry over beside the refrigerator now the fridge in these uh that might be another thing that some people like some people don't uh midwesterners like me uh you know uh, well not all midwesterners it really varies obviously but i'm from michigan and in michigan it's like 99 percent park camping and we like 12 volt and residential fridges we don't need solar doesn't mean we don't like the other things but this being a gas electric two-way fridge isn't always the perfect option for us but this is made and built for folks from the pacific northwest who boondock dry camp religiously um uh and park camp far far less so they only do the two-way fridge that's just what these folks do now that ladder is removable but i love that you don't have to heave ho let's throw the kids to the upper bunk you know they just make it a lot easier here that is interesting. That is an interesting spot for that outlet. I don't know that I think that is the best. I think that would have been much better just on this side of the curtain. What's your two cents on that? Um, over Or why why not just put it over here with the USB plugs? There's There must be a thing that I don't understand. There's got to be a reasoning behind it because that's literally exactly what they did over here. Maybe they were trying to let one set of outlets service both the bunk and and the booth but dude unless you got like uh you know a 10 foot usb cord or whatever or, or extension cord it ain't gonna do you any good and i say dude with a capital d served with the utmost of uh respect so kind of keep that in mind now the uh the ladder some people get really confused by these what you're going to do is like pick it up so that it's it's hanging uh, parallel to the ground and then it will you'll see how these will slide right off those brackets and, and then you're good so it's it's very cool that it won't just like it doesn't just fall off, you know, anything like that. Uh, porcelain foot flush stool with some very, very nice space around it. I was I was very happy with that. I never felt cramped in there whatsoever. A couple of the ORVs I've gone through, the butt napkin roller um, was hitting my right elbow funny bone like crazy. This didn't hit my right, obviously, or my left. Uh, it, it wasn't hitting, well, any of my funny bones. Um, pardon my uh, little piece of paper over here. By the, uh, by the sink. That's what I was throwing up in the Max Air vent fan. We do have a full mirror on the... Well, we have a full mirror, but we also have a full medicine cabinet, which is very, very handy. We already talked about our big vent fan here. And this freaks some people out. Like, I, this is interesting to me because direct entry bathroom doors were a big deal for like six, seven, eight years. And they sort of faded out and fizzled. I really like them. I think they're super, super handy. But I think if you've never owned an RV, when you see a door... And a bathroom, you're like, oh, that's weird. I feel like people are going to see me poop. You know, now you probably weren't wanting to say that out loud. But at the end of the day, we were all thinking it. But they give you a choice because this is a deadbolt. So you can poop with friends or you can lock it and you can poop in privacy. It's your choice on how you poop, folks. Anyway, they're doing a tub, not just a shower. But they are doing a nice uh, tri-panel sliding glass door, which is interesting. 
Um, some people like tubs and bunk houses. Some people just always want showers. Um, again, different strokes, different folks. We have different brands, different features. Good headroom in this one though. So the sidewall is only six and a half foot tall. It's a traditional um, size sidewall, but they do go with that barreled vaulted ceiling, which really opens things up in here. Now there's a couple of their interesting little details. Um, they, uh, they, they put the light switches for the, the lighting above the seating and the slide up off in the corners, um, and they do that on both sides. Now, if you're sitting in the dinette, if you're sitting in the sofa, you may have to kind of stretch and, you know that thing where you sort of do like a, a half Simone Biles back bend to kind of reach up a little bit higher? You might have to do a little bit of that, but it can work. In case you're curious, you might notice um, there's one of these things on either side of the, uh, the sofa. It's just a classic little cup holder, actually, which is really, really useful. I think I mentioned this, but I can't remember. I'm so sorry. Um, high to bed is standard. Trifold, uh, no, God bless America. Trifold high to bed is standard. Theater seat recliner is an available option. I, th I don't know which one I would go with in this floor plan. Um, cause if we look over here at the entertainment center, by default, you're going to look at this and go, that's garbage. That's a neck wrecker. I hate that. Maybe. I don't know. I don't want to speak for you. I, I, I don't know what's going through your mind. I do like the clutter cut and shoe garage that it offers though. That is a cool feature. But one of the things here is they're very good about putting some good hardware in this. If we take a look, it's got a double jointed swing arm, uh, which is different from having a double jointed thumb uh, and getting out of handcuffs, which my uncle Gary showed me once, but he was a circus clown for a long time and he knows all kinds of weird things. So never mind all that. But the entertainment position on this isn't necessarily as bad as it looks at a glance, is what I'm saying. But the kitchen storage is way better than a lot of builders who make a layout like this. That's another thing ORV seems to understand very, very well. You need more storage, you need more prep space. And the dinette, I don't think the camera picks it up right. This is what they call their mountain dinette. It is the size of a U dinette, but it's just two giant benches so that four people can far more comfortably fit at that thing, um, including adults, not just kids, which is kind of cool. And if you do fold it into a sleeper, it's still a big adult you size factor sleeper. In the two bunks, and if the, uh, the front bed, which is a 60 by 80 true queen pillow top even, the dinette and the hide bed I think you could sleep, what, five to eight in here, depending on how close you can sleep people and how well they know one another and stuff like that. You can rack them, pack them, and stack them like crazy uh, into this thing right here. It's also kind of, uh, seems like a lot of manufacturers have almost completely stopped doing any sort of disc player, but you're still seeing that DVD head unit over here. You may have noticed the sliding pocket privacy doors. As I mentioned, that is a 60 by 80 true queen bed. But what's cool, they don't just give us the nice long bed. Uh, they also still give us a lot of room to walk around it. Or uh, if you want to close your uh, your sliding privacy doors, then pull your two shades off to the side. Did you notice, by the way, there were blackout roller shades uh, over in the dinette area, which is uh, kind of cool. Um, what I'm getting at is you don't necessarily have to grab your clothes and go walking all the way over to the, uh, the bathroom or whatever just to get dressed. Breeze windows on both sides of the bedroom. Again, you've got that remote control power vent fan up here. And I'm telling you, this thing, it can move serious air. Serious, serious air. Like, I can't put it on camera. You can't understand it. You need to get in one of these. Uh, get it powered up. It only takes 12 volt and you'll be good. Speaking of 12 volt, the solar charge controller is currently blinking because we don't actually have a battery on the tongue of the RV and it does not like that. It's not really damaging anything though because we are uh, indoors where there's no power really uh, you know, coming in from the panel for it to have to try to manage anyway. And that's a nice little pro tip for you from your Uncle Josh here. When you're storing your RV, if you don't have a disconnect in line for your solar package, like Keystone's very good about that. They're about the only one that does that. Um, you might want to cover your solar panel so it's not burning up your charge controller. Looking at the storage around the bed, we're, we're basically going to look at the left half here today. But keep in mind, it is completely symmetrical um, on both sides. So uh, what you get on the left side is the same thing you get on the, uh, the right side. Now, take a look over here. This is something you get in this upgraded series. I looked at it for a second. I was like, is that a CB radio? <laughs> but it's actually this interesting little combination lock system. And I tell you, though, don't don't get your head thinking that's too secure. No RV is a fortress. Um, the only thing that's good for is keeping the kids like out of your money or whatever, you know, um, because if somebody wanted to really get into your RV, they're going to. 
And if they wanted to steal from that, they could rip it off the cabinet and take it home and get it in it opened up there. So the uh, thing I want to show you here, I want to crank this fan all the way up. You can't feel it, obviously, but hopefully you could get an idea from just the sound. Man, that thing can really move some air. Now, kind of like you've seen a few times in this video, I like to give you little tips to not just to help you find the right RV, but to help you like enjoy it the most and not break it. Remember that ladder we talked about? There's a real reason it's removable. I've got the slide about half closed right now, and I don't know if you can tell from this angle, but the slide out would hit that ladder. You need to make sure you take the ladder off. So here's my tip for you is not just that. Over here on our slide button, get one of those little like, you, you know, yellow little sticky things that you put in here, something that says ladder. So that before you open or close that slide, you, you remind yourself to go check that ladder because it's going to take one time of forgetting. Or maybe you already did take it off, but maybe the kid wanted to get up there and get their My Little Pony or whatever. I don't know. Nah, buddy. Something like that. It's only going to take one quick moment to like break that. And it's probably only going to, it'll rip the ladder mount off the slide, uh, off the bunk fascia. It won't be like, it's going to break your slide. I don't think that's going to happen, but it's still going to suck. And it, it's super easily avoidable. So there you go. But once you do that, once you get the ladder out of the way and you close the slide, this one has practically perfect road mode access. It would be Mary Poppins approved. In terms of road mode, it's practically perfect in every way. You can walk from the bed to both entry doors to the bunks to the bathroom without ever touching anything. This is a home run for the Cracker Barrel test. Now, a couple of the other ORVs that I've gone through previously, I may have described as like questionably maybe half ton towable. If you had a very capable like late model tow package half ton, I don't know that I feel that way about this one. You know, it's got 11,000 pound GVW, 8,300 pounds dry. It's got enough length, enough heft, enough hitch weight before cargo. And with this big front storage compartment complete with this handy little slide out tray, um, it, the hitch weight's only going to go up. Now, by the time you pile your own bodies, uh, including the kids, into the vehicle, uh, I do think that this will uh, exceed the hitch weight of most uh, any half-ton pickup. So, with very, very precious few exceptions. Generally speaking, my recommendation here is going to be three-quarter ton and up. Um, if you disagree, that's okay. You have, you know, the right to do that. You know, everyone's got their own little idea here. So, uh, a couple things. This does have a true two-inch sidewall, which uh, a very small number of travel trailers actually do that. Uh, there's a lot of, and actually the way that you can tell as a consumer, I'm gonna teach you how to fish. Um, you don't need to ask the salesperson because whether they know or they don't, I'm not gonna say a lot of them don't, uh, whether they know or they don't, you can verify for yourself. Look inside the door jam. Here's what I mean. Pop the door open and look right over here. If the door jam is basically flush with the wall, that's a two inch wall because these door jams are all made the same size by the same suppliers, basically. If you see where this black flange sticks in like an extra half inch, that means you have an inch and a half wall. So this is a true two inch wall, which is, it, it's a little bit easier for actually running wiring in the laminated walls. You might notice most builders don't do that uh, in this company. They're not afraid to because they have the thickness to do it. Hopefully that was a handy bit of shopping info for you there. Look up at the awning. You notice how it's got that aluminum shroud? It doesn't just protect the base of the awning fabric. It is the base of the awning fabric. So there's literally no uh, awning material exposed to the elements or a low-hanging tree branch um, that, that can get shredded up. And if you manage to bust up that aluminum tube... You, you did something you did something real wrong or or you know you got caught in a freak storm or something like that I and mean, it ain't always you but you get the idea um the uh uh steps here they don't do the fold down stable steps because with this having that off-road chassis uh an upgraded suspension package where maybe you want to get uh just you know off the the paved roads and stuff like that sometimes when you do that you're not always on a nice flat level site and those stable steps don't always marry up properly now, uh, we're going to talk about uh, solar here in just, uh, just a minute. Um, on uh, the side of the RV, they do still maintain a side solar prep plug. So if you want to get a portable panel and chase the sun and park in the shade, you can do that. Up on the roof, 
you will see uh, three additional plugs. We'll get to those in just a second. First of all, uh, power stabilizers all the way around this, so everything is push button easy. And this brand is renowned and well respected for their hot cold climate camp uh, packages here. Underbelly is enclosed. It is insulated. It is forced air heated. You've got uh, you know tank heaters so that your stuff don't freeze up. Like they do the things that need to be done to protect you. Now. Uh, as long as we were talking about solar, it's kind of circle back to that. You saw a little brief glance at it in our floor plan in a flash. Looking at that footage again, a couple things. You see the Max Air vent covers, all those big XL vent fans that we saw, they all have those covers on them. And you see that you have on this one, one of three potential factory installed solar panels. Um, by default, this is only solar prepped up there. Those three plugs will always be there, but you can get it with one, two, or three of those ZAMP panels, which are 170, 175-ish watts each. Now, we've been talking good news. Let's talk some bad news. We have two potential hot surfaces exhausting uh, over here on the campsite of the RV with the kids. The furnace doesn't bother me as much because usually if it's really cold uh, and you're outside, you don't tend to be hanging out on the patio as much. I do like though, that it is a furnace that can slide out the side of the RV for easy service access. The water heater is the one that's a little more concerning for me. So this is a 10 gallon vessel, first of all. So it's bigger and you get more hot water per hour. But it, even in the summertime, you're probably gonna have your water heater running. So it's going to be a potential hot surface right over here, probably near the picnic table side of things. You're going to wanna make sure you educate the kids on staying away from that thing. Um, that might be, if that's like a deal breaker factor for you, I get it. I respect it. That's why I went out of the way to talk about it. I want to keep your kids safe. You know, there's plenty of other RVs that might work, but in the meantime, we've got the Goodyear endurance radials, the more ride shock dampening suspension. And if I get up here a little bit, you can see, let me, uh, I, uh, hold on. Where's, where's my, where's my button? There's my button. You can see that little shock that's actually attached right there. Um, that is something that your average manufacturer just simply does not do to give you better, smoother ride and handling. Now, this is kind of interesting. They do the same thing on the other side of the RV for your black and gray tank poles. They have these little um, holes that go through the skirt, basically, to be able to access, in this case, your propane cooker hooker. But uh, on the other side of the RV, your black and gray tank poles, which is nice because they're kind of hidden up under the skirt, which keeps them protected a little bit better from stuff. But the other thing is that makes them harder to get to. So they give you a little access porthole for it, which I think is kind of cool. I, I like thoughtful little smart details like that. Now we are all jammed up here because we are in an RV show display. I got here like 7 a.m. today to try to beat the crowd so I could start getting some footage for you. But notice how even our outside shower door is a full one inch thick insulated baggage uh, uh, door, just, just like our front compartment doors. And that is because ORV knows the number one thing people fail to winterize properly is actually their um, uh, uh, outside shower. So the fact that they are giving that an extra layer of protection here, just anything they can do to help protect that, that's what I like about this. And uh, if you you know talk to the people at Northwood, their goal is very simple. They wanna make the best built, longest lasting trailers they possibly can. And I'm choosing to get these ORVs today because I've had a ton of requests for them. You folks continue to drive this channel. So if there is something you wanna see, I can't promise I can get to it quickly. And uh, I get a lot more requests than I can possibly fulfill. But if I can see the same thing getting requested a number of times, I will do my best to try to make that happen for you. So keep those uh, questions coming, keep the comments coming. Let me know what you think about this one. And if you like how we show you the good with the bad, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun. And happy camping, everyone.